Hi, so in this video we're going to be looking at geometric uh, series and sequences. A geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term is multiplied by a constant ratio to get the next term. So in this example here, we have 2, which we multiply by 3 to get 6, 6 we multiply by 3 to get 18, 18 we multiply by 3 to get the 54 and so on. So the constant ratio is 3 and um, the first term is given by um, A and A would equal 2. Okay, so in a series we take our sequence and we add all the terms together. So the terms are just the numbers in your sequence. Okay, so more generally we can write this like this. So A is the first um, term and then we multiply it by a constant ratio R to get the second term, which we multiply by the constant ratio R to get the third term. So that's going to be R times R, which is R squared, which we then multiply by um, another R to get the fourth term. So hopefully you see the nth term is given by A times R to the N minus 1. And it's N minus 1 because the first term doesn't have an R in, so we're always 1 behind. So the first term is just a on its own and the second term is a times r and it's the second term so 2 take a 1 2 take away 1 is 1 so that's a r and the third term would be a r 3 take away 1 is 2 so it's a r squared and so on okay so the value of the common ratio just comes from taking any term and dividing it by the term before it so if we just go back to here if I take 6 and divide it by 2, I get 3. If I get 18 and divide it by 6, I get 3. If I get 54 and I divide it by 18, I get 3. So that's just how you find your common ratio. Okay, the sum of the terms of a geometric series uh, is given by uh, either of these two formulas. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, you are actually given all these formulas um, in the formula booklets, but you do need, need to be able to prove this. So this is a proof that you do have to learn. It does actually get asked, so just be sure that you can trot it out when you need to. So if I have a sum to n of a series, and this is the general formula for the series, and I multiply it by r, so I multiply each term by r, so a times r, and I'm putting them just underneath um, the term ahead, just so it's easier when I do this, this stage. So when I sub subtract um, this one from that one, so R S N minus S N, I can you see that this one take away that disappears, that disappears, that disappears. And they're all going to disappear except that first A and the last A to the R N. So then I get that R times S N minus S N um, equals a R N minus A. And so then I just uh, factorize out this S N. So I get R minus 1 there. And then I get A to the R N minus 1 because I factorize out the A. And then I divide by the R minus 1. And then I get what I want here. OK, so it's just a little trick. You just need to remember how you do it. OK, now if we have um, there are R is limited to being between uh, minus 1 and 1. So that means it's a decimal. So it's zero, uh, 0 point, well, it's under 1. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2. We get the sum to infinity of a geometric series is given by this thing here. And we can see how we get that. But if we look at this, if we have something which is very small and we take it to the power of n, where n is very big, we get a very small number. So if you have, say, uh, 0 0.1 to the power of a thousand, you're going to get a titchy tiny number. And so that number becomes so small as n goes to infinity, we can say r n goes to zero. And so this bit disappears and we're just left with the a over 1 minus r. And of course, if we don't restrict our r, when we have like 2 to the power of a million, we don't get something which goes to zero, we go get something which goes to something very, very, very big. And then there's another term which is even bigger. So what we can say, if um, R is restricted to being between minus one and one, we have a convergence series because it tends to a number. Because as n tends to infinity, the nth term tends to zero. So we do actually have um, an answer. But if we have um, our R 
bigger than that there is no there's no sum because it as it goes on and on and on it always gets gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we can't actually get a final answer okay so on this uh um, sorry, on the screen we've just got the summary of the various formulas. I have another video I'm just about to do now uh, which will go over some questions where we actually use the formulas. But as I say, these formulas I think are given um, on the formula sheets. Um, so you don't have to know them, but you do have to know how you get to this one and understand where the other ones come from. Okay, I hope that's